Welcome back to Wisconsin Now for the Eye Drops murder trial. Jesse Kershevsky is charged with killing her longtime friend, Lynn Hernan. Hernan died after drinking a lethal dose of Visine. Kershevsky admitted to police that she gave her a bottle of water with Visine in it. The prosecution says Kershevsky was in debt and deliberately put the Visine in the water bottle so she could take full control of the victim's $300,000 estate. Well, the defense claims Hernan was suicidal, a heavy drinker, and known to put Visine in her cocktails. They claim she asked Kershevsky to do it. Well, much of today's testimony focused on Hernan's bank accounts and the numerous checks made out to Kershevsky. Detective Plants, when we took a break, we were on slide 75, I believe. And do you know what is in this uh, slide? I believe this is the, um, it's the ending payout of Lynn Hernan's 7601, 7601 account and her 5336 account. And again, this is after Ms. Hernan's death that these slips are dated? Correct. And what is the 7601 account valued at at the time of Ms. Hernan's death? Uh, well, these, these are dated 11-6 uh, of 2018, so approximately a little over a month. But the last ending balance of that account was $87.72. And what is the ending balance as of that November date for account ending 5336 of Ms. Hernan? Uh, $1.04. And if we go to the next slide, um, what is depicted in that slide 76 of Exhibit 134? That is the closing of the BMO Harris uh, accounts, the check that was received. And who uh, is that check written out to? It's written out to the estate of uh, Lynn Hernan. And what's the total amount of that check? Uh, $88.76. And does that appear to be the total of those two accounts from the previous slide? Yes. Okay. And then next slide. Um, what I want to direct your attention to for this point, Detective Plenis, is that, uh, well, technically fifth line down where it says BMO X7601. Do you see that line? Yes. Um, you talked about 21 checks total from Ms. Hernan's money market account? Correct. Was that just you focusing on checks written to Jesse Kraszewski? No, that was just checks issued from that account. So from the time of October 2014 until this November 6, 2018 date when the account is closed, there were only 21 checks written from Ms. Hernan's money market account? Correct. And you said 20 of them were written to Ms. Kraszewski? Correct. Did you total up the value of those 20 checks written to Ms. Kraszewski? Yes. And is that the figure that's on slide 77? Yes. And could you just read that value out loud, please? The total of the 7601 account was $134,337.01. Okay. And between October of 2014 and that November 2018 date, that account started at $250,000, you said? Correct. And ended at $87? Correct. And how many sort of big purchases did Ms. Hernan make that you can attribute to her? Uh, we're aware of the large purchase of the 2016 Jeep Wrangler, and she made a purchase of jewelry. Um, I believe that was in January of 18, uh, end of December of 17, she made a large purchase of jewelry. Those were the two large purchases I was able, we were able to identify. Okay. But these 20 checks was worth that $134,000 figure? Correct. All right, still here to discuss. Criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Marie Pereira. Marie, my mom used to say folks who don't have a lot, when they come into money, they go from can't do to can't don't. And so they want to do everything. And, and it's true, right? Because you have this lady who had some issues. And there's no doubt that what the state has established is that she was greedy. I mean, she was going for that money. And she was making a lot of purchases. My question is, does that make her a killer? You know what? Um, 
she was very, very greedy, and that might be it, because it shows exactly how she overused and utilized that deceased woman's money, and if the woman was alive, she wouldn't have done it. So it certainly puts a good seal on the motive aspect, and while the prosecutors are not tasked with having to prove motive, jurors want to see motive, and greed is a good motive, and the actions she took with that woman's bank account, how swift she spent the money was greed. Yeah, greed is the best one. It's as old as time, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you can't do yep. better than that. But there is, there are some facts here that work in her favor. I mean, we do know Jesse had legit power of attorney. She was named as, as a co-owner of many of her accounts. She had access. She was named in the will. I mean, this has got to, got to help in terms of motive. The idea that she was already on some level misusing this woman's money even before she died. I mean, why did she have to kill her to get access to it? She pretty much had access. She had access, but while alive, the woman didn't know how she was going in her account and utilizing it. Because the prosecutors made sure to explain to the jurors that she was sort of like Wilma Flintstone in this age. She did everything by hand. She didn't have online accounts. She wasn't a person who used computers. So it was easy while she was alive for this woman to be slowly draining her account. So it was even more easy to just wipe it out completely, take her life so that she can just have one fell swoop access to the account. Yeah, Lynn Hernan was unsophisticated, that's for sure. This chick certainly mm -hmm. wasn't. Um, but in many ways, as I look at this trial and continue to hear testimony, I think it comes down to not only the state of mind of the defendant, but the state of mind of Lynn Hernan. As far as the defense is concerned, they need to show this jury that Lynn Hernan's state of mind was two things. One, that she was suicidal. If they can get to that, yes. they can deal with the murder charge. And if they could get to the idea that Lynn Hernan wanted her, because this is the claim of Jesse Krzyzewski. She wanted her to have this money. She wanted her, because of what she was doing for her, to be someone that could take advantage of money that perhaps Lynn Hernan couldn't take advantage of. I mean, you have a, that, this makes a lot of sense because if they can prove that, you know what, she didn't have to steal the money because the defendant was giving it to her while alive. So that eliminates the motive. But if, but she already admitted to giving her access to those eye drops and she put it in her drink, she gave access to it and she basically said, I maybe assisted her with suicide. That's against the law. So either way you look at it, she committed a crime here because it is against the law to assist someone who you know to be suicidal to commit suicide. And her saying that she gave access to her and she put it in her drink for her makes her look like she did it on purpose. She took advantage of a vulnerable person because she just wanted quick access to her entire estate. Yeah, no doubt, but it's not premeditated murder under those circumstances, which I think maybe the defense might consider a victory in this case.